welcome to the Thai News and SNEC Solar Leadership Conversations. My name is Michael Schmeler. I'm the Managing Director of Thai News and I'm ha very happy to have with us Yan Yang, who's the CTO of Ranergy. Welcome, Yan. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So le let's start your very famous, of course, among module ma manufacturers who buy your cell uh, cells. Uh, Ranergy is uh, one of the world leading uh, cell manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And um, tell, tell us a little bit about, um, about your company and how you became a top three mm. uh, solar cell manufacturer. Sure. Well, um, Lonergy was formed in 2013. So this year is 10 years anniversary, actually. Okay. Uh, in the first, I should say the first two years is very difficult. Because at that time, there are only four employees, only four people, the total company. And we didn't have our own solar cell factory. So the technical services was the main business at that time. Okay. Yeah. And this situation began to change, in, improve a little bit in 2015. In that year, we signed a contract with uh, a factory is named Shanxi Luang. We signed a contract with that factory to improve their efficiency. And it turned out that we did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now it changed. We start to earn money. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when it comes to 2017, um, finally we, have, we had our own first uh, solar cell factory in Yancheng City. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is the headquarters we are located now. And after that, we start to expand. And we have uh, expanded to, from Yancheng to Jianhu. You know, Jianhu is a small city near to Yancheng and to Thailand. Yeah. So we continue to expand and expand. And our effort has been recognized by our customer. So our market share is also began to expand. And by the end of last year, I think the capacity, well, the shipment, sorry, the shipment of the, the total uh, in 2022 is uh, 21 kilowatts. Okay. Yeah. So that was the shipment. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as I understand, you had also invested in Mm. Polysilicon. I, sure. uh, can can you also provide some background on yes. this? Well, investing polysilicon, I think, is a decision made from the the long term development strategy of company. The one thing is uh, we need to ensure to make sure the security of the supply chain. That's the one reason. So we need to invest upward polysilicon, and the second reason is. Um, well, you know, I just mentioned that we started from the solar cell uh, research and manufacturing, but we aim to be an uh, overall uh, new renewable energy provider. So we need to, which means we need to cover the whole chain of the renewable energy from polysilicon to cell to module and to system. Okay. Yeah, that's the second reason. Actually, we have our own system. Uh, department already. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that means um, you have the cell production. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> sorry, went into or invested into polysilicon. Yeah. What about ingots and wafers? Um, are you contracting that or is that also planned to be... Um, at the moment, no. We don't have ingot wafers at the moment. And but I think in the future we have you both will have. of it. So the idea is really to become a fully integrated exactly. manufacturer. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now you're going into modules, um, or you've gone into modules, um, and then um, also into systems. Can you just explain us a little bit then mm. the, the, the business model of, uh, of, of Runergy? So will you still provide mm. cells to your customers mm. um, or will you turn fully into a module company and uh, maybe even uh, use some of your the modules for your own projects. Um, so how, how should should that work in the future? 
Yeah. Natural resources are still the main business of Lonergy. The reason we move into module is, just as I mentioned, we need to have the integration of the whole chain of the, this business. So we need to get closer to the end user. So module is directly faced to the end user. That's the reason we move to the module business. Yeah. Mm. And, and what about the systems business? Um, how, can you explain a little bit how, how, how that should work? Uh, the system business is another department and uh, it's quite small. I mean, when you compare with Long G and other big companies, yeah. But uh, I can tell you what, just last month, there's um, one megawatt big PV system just has been turned on last month. That is built by our PV system. So that was your first uh, big Not project. the first one, the biggest one. The biggest one, OK. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that's at the moment still focused in China, or are you also looking yes. beyond? Yes, at the moment still focused in China. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, you know, we are in this huge CAPEX phase, uh, so everyone is uh, crazily expanding. Uh, crazy. So, uh, so how, um, how are you playing in this, uh, this yeah, you can call it almost competition to become the biggest? <laughs> OK. So you, you mean the, the low map? Or no, no, yeah, so your roadmap. So what's your plans for in terms of expansion? Uh, so, uh, um, um, I think that's a good question. You know, the low map, the technical low map is always very difficult to predict. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 at the moment it's only about capacity, so not so about uh, the cell technology. About at the moment, how, how, how are the plans ah. for capacities? Okay, so in terms of polysilicon, uh -huh. we start from polysilicon, okay? Yeah. In terms of polysilicon, we have at the moment, by the end of last year, we already have 50,000 tons mm -hmm. in Ningxia province. Mm -hmm. It works very successful. We earn a lot of money from that. And the second project is in Inner Mongolia. It will be finished by the end of maybe the end of next year. Not mm -hmm. sure. The capacity is about 50, oh no, 80,000 tons. Okay. Yeah, per year. Mm. Okay. Yeah. There's so far the two projects in terms of polysilicon and in terms of solar cells. At the moment, we have, I think, 26 gigawatts okay. capacity for solar cells, which are all perk cells, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. But by the end of this year, we'll expand about 36 okay. gigawatts. Uh, that's for Topcom, mm -hmm. all for Topcom. Okay, mm -hmm. so you will keep the the perk as uh, uh, as it is, and the new expansion is uh, based on Topcon. Yeah, basically it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Another option is we upgrade the, the Topcon line to Topcon, or uh, sorry, the perk line to Topcon. But that will depend on customers' exactly. uh, yeah. needs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It depends on the cost, and in terms of module, we have um, I think we have twelve gigawatts and nine gigawatts in Yancheng and Thailand, respectively. Okay. Yeah, at the moment. And by the end of this year, I think we have another 11 gigawatts in total in Thailand and US. So you will also start module manufacturing in the US? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And Thailand will be expanded so that yes. you have cell and module manufacturing yes. in yeah. Thailand? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And so, um, how does is that? So that means um, in Thailand, will all cells be then um, uh, assembled into modules, or is it? Um, um no, I think the capacity of cells is still larger than module in Thailand. Okay. Yeah. So that means you're also serving to module manufacturers. True. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Um, and um, the technology roadmap, you already said it's, uh, it's difficult to predict and I think things are changing obviously so quickly, uh, but uh, you are, you're the CTO and you're overseeing that uh, all and uh, you probably have your people working on and looking into all the, the technologies. And you made a technology choice already because you said we're not going HJT, but we're going Topcon. Um, so, um, so, so what was uh, the rationale behind that? Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, 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 and simply just give us a, a little bit of, of an idea what, what your thinking is about, mm -hmm. uh, even mm -hmm. if no decisions uh, have been made. Yeah. Well, because I think the PV energy is not yet major. It's still under the level. And it changed too quickly. So 
I can give you an example. You know, about four years ago, many people said that Tocom, I know, Perkcell had reached its limit, its ceiling. Can no, no chance to get higher than 23% about four years ago. You know, at that time, the average efficiency about 22.5, as I remember. So uh, let's change Tocom or other, other junction or IBC, just get it off Perkcell. I disagree with them at the time. You know, just I mentioned that my PhD was focused on the simulation, you know, <laughs> you know. So by the simulation, I think, at that time, I thought that uh, the perk cell can reach 24% about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And today, you know, in Lology, uh, R&D, we had reached this 24% average in a small batch, a few thousand cells average. Mm -hmm. mm. So, I think in terms of low map, the perk cell will finish its uh, historic mission, I think. Then it reached the 24% okay. average. Yeah, and then hand it over to the top com cell. Yeah. So, but, and where are you in average now? Where is this now? Where is now the average for for You mean for, the, for, 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 for max perk? production for yeah. perk? Yeah. It's about 23 for 6 or 7 average. Okay, so the there's moment. still a little bit. So there's a little bit. The 24% I mentioned is for Andy, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and when do you think it will be reached in mass production? It will be one year, maybe. Okay. Yeah. It depends on how fast the top com will, develop, will be delivered, you know. <clears throat> so the next step may be top com. Be because the cost for equipment <coughs> of top com has been um, going down very quickly, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. It's very cost effective compared to other uh, cell type like heterojunction or IVC. But, yeah. but I think the, the interesting thing is also still about costs, um, a comparison of PERC and TopCon. Mm -hmm. Now, I think almost everyone is moving TopCon mm -hmm. um, and customers also want TopCon. Somehow I think mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. seed is planted that, uh, that the customers mm -hmm. uh, think they really need TopCon. But from a cost perspective, probably PERC is still better than TopCon, right? Um, if you only look at uh, the single side um, yield yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the field, when you put the modules in the field, the yield, if you only look for the single side, yeah, perk cell is alpha from Topcom. Yeah. But Topcom cell has its advantage that the, the real side, the yeah, bifacial, the, the, the yeah, yeah. yeah, is higher. Yeah. But yeah. for you as a manufacturer, if we don't look at the customer at the moment, looking at the cost side mm. um, and also the profit side in the end for a manufacturer, mm. I think here the perk, uh, the perk cell is more attractive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. just I mentioned at the moment, we still need to get to 24% for perk cell. Yeah. yeah, after that, it literally is a limit. Yeah. It's difficult, not limit, but difficult to, yeah. to get higher. Yeah. Yeah. But, but at the moment, still you make more profits on perk than you. True. Yeah? yeah. Because I think the, 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 mm -hmm. the, 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 mm -hmm. the price for Topcon mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. hardly any higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But the market is, is driven, is driving us to, to move to the Topcon very quick, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I think the next step, the Topcon will reach, well, my estimation is about 26.5%, yeah, more or less, yeah. When? Uh, it's a good question because, you know, this is this year the total expansion of our token is about 400 gigawatts. It's huge. It's crazy. Yeah. It's huge, and efficiency is getting higher very fast. And the reason for this, I think, token is not a, a new thing. It's not a new technology. Mm -hmm. You know, before the Frank Fetterman in from for uh, uh, used this name Topcom for the tunnel observation structure. Actually, before, a few years before that, I think it's about 2,000 years, in 2000, yeah. Sun Power already used this technology in their IBC structure. Yeah. I mean, this technology has been intensely studied, but not in the industry, but in the lab, or in other very small among the community. So we have this 
accumulation of technology already. Now we move to the max production, so it goes very quick. Okay. Yeah, that's my personal point of view. But this is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think this is not a good thing for Topcom, which means maybe the lifetime for Topcom will be not very long. Yeah. Because every structure has its own limits. Yeah. If you move too fast at the first beginning of one or two years, it will maybe the, the lifetime will be short. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So unless you deliver or keep the evolution of the new structure or new design of Topcom, the lifetime will be very short, maybe three or five years. Sure. The question is actually what comes next and uh, what, uh, so mm -hmm. if we go to Tandem, what will be the substructure? Huh? So. Yeah, I think the next step after Topcom will be Tandem. Yeah. Yeah. Because from the fiscal um, point of view, when you look at the, the recombination, you know, there are mainly three channels for the contamination for solar cells. One is the, um, the recombination lost, mm -hmm. the, the electron and how recombination lost. Yep. The second one is optical loss. Mm -hmm. The third one is the resistive loss. So if you look at the recombination loss, for top cell, itself, we have reached a very good level. The J0 of the, the tannoxide preservation has less than one fenton per centimeter. Is pretty low already. Yeah. But when you, when you look at the optical loss, from perk to top con, it's not improved but getting worse. When you look at the current, the JC, from perk to top con, is getting lower due to the absorption of the polysilicon. No, no, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. The question is only, of course, um, if there might be also another path, and that's actually that we get into IBC, uh, could be also that we go heterojunction IBC maybe. Mm. So I think at least what we've been seeing recently also that some companies uh, mm. try to go directly to back contact mm. cells. Uh. Well, IBC is an option. I mean, but tandem cell, you know, yeah. tandem structure. We will outperform IBC. No, no, sure, but the question is, uh, does that come before? Huh? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, the, in the future, yeah. in the future, so if you need to improve the optical rust, we have to use tandem structure. Absolutely, that's uh, for sure. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. the, that's my personal Yeah, yeah, the only question is, only what, what comes after top one, especially when you say it mm -hmm. might be very short lived. Huh? Huh? So, let's see. Um, before we dive too deep into technology, I think we could talk <laughs> hours about that. Sorry. And it's, um, um, just tell us a little bit about your, your strategy um, of, um, for modules. Um, so because I think you have been a cell manufacturer, so you were selling to module manufacturers, and I think now it's completely different when you start, when you start selling modules. Huh? Mm. So that means you have to look for distributors, um, you have to look for uh, another, mm. another mm. sales network. So what, what strategy, what's the strategy and how, how do you want to do that also geographically? Mm. Well, I think we still need to focus on solar cell. Mm -hmm. The solar cell is still our main business and actually we, we need to keep the, the company running well using the profit from the solar cell actually. So I think in the next three or five years, more than 50% of our solar cell capacity uh, will be uh, sent to other uh, module customer. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That's our strategy. Yeah. So that means you want to just slowly, uh, slowly. start growing yeah, the yeah. module business. But <laughs> nevertheless, where, where are your um, um, modules um, being sold? Where are they available? Um, now it's mainly in China. Mm. But we also uh, start to sell in the U.S. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's why we need to build our factory in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you already um, decided on where and... Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. The U.S. factory will be open, in, I think, in September or October this year. Okay. Yeah. And you can already say where it is or is it... To be honest, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, okay, but it's all all under under preparation, so the project yeah, is yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. Okay, because mm -hmm. September is already very soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We will announce this news in SPI. Okay. You know, the SPI conference in US. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, 
Great. So, um, so what, what's uh, what's the news for um, Ranergy is actually uh, presenting at SNEC? Um, I think the biggest news is we are going to announce. Um, we call it super module. Uh -huh. Yeah, it made from the M10 cell, and the, the Pmax reached to a uh, 600 watt. Okay, it's a 600 watt. Topcon module. Topcon module. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many cells is it? Um, so it's a. Ah. You will see the go to our booth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that means mm. basically that's your first Topcon product yes. you are now yes. uh, releasing yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I can tell you the, the efficiency of the module is 23.2 percent. Wow, that's high. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be. So you would be the third one now, actually, to cross the 23% 23, 23, um, uh, level, efficiency. yeah, module efficiency level, because I think, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that was uh, the next border, and uh, mm. yeah, that's very exciting. Okay, very cool. Thanks, Jan.